Hello. One of the common questions that we get asked is, how long does it take for a machine vision system to give a result? So in other words, what is the processing time or the cycle time of a machine vision system? Hi, my name is Raghava Kashipa, CEO of Qualitas Technologies. In this video, I'm gonna break down the different components of what constitutes the time slices for an entire cycle of a machine vision inspection process. So where does it all start? Now, in most production lines, material is moving on an assembly line or in some kind of conveyor or automated uh, fashion. And the parts are usually moved in front of a camera so that the camera is then able to image the part to be able to inspect it for the required inspection parameters. So there are two options, either the part comes in front of the camera and stops for a few milliseconds to give it enough time to, for the camera to then start the acquisition or you may want to introduce a delay in the camera acquisition uh, software to um, ensure that there is a, a sufficient time um, before the actual image acquisition happens. So this is the time between when the part comes in front of the camera and the trigger has been activated and the, the actual instance in which the image acquisition happens. So that's the trigger delay. So the third component is the actual image acquisition time. So this is the period between which the sensor of the camera is exposed to the part and the image acquisition has happened. So all the light information that is being captured by the sensor is converted to electronic information uh, which is then digitally transformed to an image. So usually this time is the exposure time which you know exposes the sensor to the part for it to acquire the image fully. Now the image has been acquired but it's inside that camera. Now it has to be transferred to a host or a processing system you know, assuming that it's connected to a PC or some external computing uh, device, which is then going to process that image. So the fourth uh, component of time is the transfer time. So this is where the image gets transferred from the camera, either by some interface like a gigabit ethernet or a USB interface to the host computer or the computing device. That's the transfer time. Now in case of an embedded, um, uh, camera like a smart camera there isn't a physical transfer that's actually happening so you may you know this this may not uh, be applicable but in most PC based systems you would have some kind of a cable or a wired interface to be uh, included and that time to transfer those image has to be considered so now you have the camera which has acquired the image and transferred it to the computing device and the next element is the actual image processing. Now, in this image processing, there's of course many algorithms, be it AI-based or rule-based. Uh, there is a number of software operations that happen. So let's just call it the image processing or the in image inferencing time. Now this is the time for the software to do its magic to take the digital image and then compute some kind of result. Once the result has been computed, it needs to be communicated to an external device, either to perform an action, like communicate that result to a PLC or to an ERP system, or you know, whichever control system that needs to take action based on this result. And that would be the communication time. So this, again, would be based on the interface that you have between the computing device and the control system. So let's say, for example, you have a PC-based image processing system and you're communicating a result to signal a rejection via maybe a serial port to a PLC. Now the serial port transfer uh, has a certain latency that you need to consider. So that's the communication time. So the next time you think about the whole cycle time of a machine vision system, break it down into all these components. There's the material handling time to ensure the part comes in front of the camera. There's any kind of delays that are introduced before you start acquisition. There is the image acquisition time, which is the time for the camera to acquire the image. 
There's the image transfer time, which transfers the image from the camera to the host PC or any kind of computing device. There is the image processing time for the software to analyze the image. And then finally, communication of the result, the time it takes for you to communicate the result to any kind of external system. So all this comprises of the entire machine vision cycle. Now, from past experience, there are a few things you can, you know, uh, which there, there are obviously a few of these components which are going to be the bottleneck. Usually the image acquisition time isn't that high. They're usually in you know, milliseconds or sometimes even in microseconds. So you can ignore that. So it's usually the, anything that involves physical motion that is going to be of a higher latency, like the material handling time, which is going to be sometimes you know, milliseconds, even in seconds. Um, the image processing time also has a significant portion of uh, the latency which you need to consider. So when you pay attention to these bottlenecks and optimize it accordingly, you can make sure that the end-to-end -end time falls within your limits and your entire cycle time is you know, designed to match your production uh, cycles that you want. So don't just look at one of these components, look at it holistically and design the system so that it matches your tack time and your requirements. Hope this video was useful. Thank you.